Welcome to Weld.com. Today we have a special guest, Mr. Rush Kane. Thanks for coming in and seeing us, a.k.a. Kane Kid on Instagram. Uh, we met in Chicago. You, you came up and introduced yourself, and um, you handed me a really interesting piece. It looked like a bullet casing or something. Super thin, little bitty tube that you had capped off, and I thought, wow, that is amazing control. Since then, I've kind of looked up some stuff that you've done, like the razor blades and all that. You must be a young guy with steady nerves and stuff, huh? You don't. You <laughs> I, don't know. Know. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you do a lot of. Um, and by the way, what were those thin tubes? Were those Inconel, Monel? What? What? You, uh, it was an alloy. So the small ones that I showed you, those mm -hmm. were uh, six thousandths wall Inconel. Wow. Uh, with like seven, seven thirty seconds. Whew. Uh, Od. Wow, those are tiny. So when we talk about technique, <clears throat> you know, I, you were kind of doing some practice sessions over here a while ago and kind of loosening up and getting to know this machine. Um, we did an autogenous weld outside corner, and then you did some pulse work and yeah, and stuff like that. You wanna you wanna do some of those, and we'll zoom in and get some arc shots, and you can kind of talk about your technique and the results and uh, um, and all that. Yeah. Okay, we'll go through some parameters for the viewers so they can kind of understand what we're doing. And we have samples of stainless aluminum, and we've got a piece here of thin wall. Uh, what is that? That is .06 wall. Yeah. Stainless tubing. I see you have a. Um, you brought your custom purge pieces here. What is that? <laughs> Is that, yeah, so is that that Reynolds uh, purge material? Yeah, those are Reynolds caps. <laughs> Did they come out of this? Did they, yeah, oh, here it is right here. The, it's heavy duty Reynolds caps. They're custom, custom made to fit for right. application. Nice. So you could have some odd shapes and just get into anything <laughs> out of your character. Oh, man. Uh, but like this, just like this setup here, like if you were uh, going to be splicing together some exhaust tubing this is something mm -hmm. very similar like uh, a typical gauge that you'd be using a typical material of stainless um, and a proper way is you'd want to purge that the best you can and typically you don't always have hundreds of dollars of purging tools and this is a system that it's going to be effective if, if nothing it's going to be better than nothing effective and so we uh, we have the have it hooked up to the bottle. It's going to run into this side, uh, and have this side plugged off, and have this kind of locked in, just molded in with that foil. So we can butt it up uh, together, you know, butt it up totally flush, solid, and then weld it out little bits and sections to let it cool down. I see. So we're so essentially we're just running off a separate regulator other than your bottle over here. Otherwise, we'd want to use a, a dual dual flow uh, flow meter yeah um, let's do some outside corners and go through these settings we'll save this rascal for last okay you want to do that yeah yeah so I have some a couple uh, looks like eighth inch stainless plates uh, do some open corners on tack those together that will run uh, four different we have four different sections sectioned off so we can do a, okay. a couple different things to see how different things work with those okay so I'll do an autogenous uh, pulse setting right through the first section, and I'll switch to a lay wire pulse setting, and then go straight to uh, just a casual dab technique, and then kind of finish it off with some fast dabs. Then we okay. can see kind of how the, the, the... The timing of your dabs? Yeah. Oh, I see. So when you say a dab technique, it'd be like dab and pull it out while you're traveling, and then the fast dab at the end is yeah just a lot quicker dabs in the weld pool yeah okay well I'm gonna grab a hood and watch I want to watch this I'm sure the viewers do too so so just do this I'll tack it up open corner okay You're using 1 16th yeah so 1 16th uh, 308 L okay got a 12 set up on there okay so what do you run your um, the CFH is right at just over 20 okay between 20 and 25 That's typically what I run on that interesting One amp is what your machine was saying. Well, that blended in nicely. 
you can see where that where that pulse kind of doesn't let the heat radiate throughout the part. So that's where that's something I'll use the pulse technique for. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Um, so for something like this, it's not a super structural weld, but it's for like cosmetic application. That's right. something that would be could be a like benefit. A, like an oil tank or something. It's not it's not pressure. It's just volume or mm -hmm. yeah. Something if you're trying to control warpage, not going to need a lot of structure to it. It's, it's a good technique to use. If you need a little bit more structure, that's where the lay wire can come in. Okay. So we'll do that with the with the pulse setting on there. That is running a little bit hotter on that one. 80 amps. I mean, right at 80 amps. I'm glancing at your machine every time you get into a run. I can feel it's a little bit hotter. I almost like that better as far as, uh, you know, when you, when you mentioned finish. Yeah, this... For this, being able to round that off. I also like that initial color, too. This is a great technique if you're going to do a finish weld. Mm -hmm. And it's for something that needs that's highly cosmetic. This type of uh, technique in a setting... Um, is going to save you a lot of time in the finish work. You just go over that with a DA, super fine oh, grit, yeah. and finish it. Huh? Mm -hmm. And it's going to keep. A, it's going to help keep a lot of the the warping out, and help keep your material flat. So now you're just going uh, straight up technique, no pulse. You're doing the dab technique on this one, right at 66 amps. Never moved off 66. I will hand it to you. When you get going, you don't. You don't vary anything. You can tell off that quench that it put a little more heat into it than those other ones. Yeah, I know. But that steady current lets that the heat kind of radiates throughout the part more. Which, on a longer run, that would cause more warpage throughout that material. Part of the reason I saved this doing a faster dabs for this last section is because of that that edge. Mm -hmm. Where typically, um, if you have an open corner, I like to start at the corner. That way I'm not pushing the heat towards the edge where it, it would be causing it to open it up. So because we started here on this one and we have, we have another open edge, uh, a faster technique and adding more material to keep that puddle cooler is going to help uh, eliminate that heat hole. Uh, and it's, for some reason it used to drive people nuts. I'd start here, stop in the middle, start here, stop on top of it with a little bit. I don't know why, but I never blew up these. I hate blowing up these edges and corners, and I see that happen a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, you know your you know your heat's traveling ahead of you. And it's saturated, but people just for some reason they don't get off of that heat. So this will be an interesting technique and a good lesson. Wow, that went quick, fast, and accurate. A lot less heat input on that last one. So there's four different techniques. You didn't vary your amperage by 20 amps. Okay, so the next piece that we had was the uh, thin wall tubing. I think we determined that was in and around the, the uh, we might have stated that it was in around the 1 16th, but it, more, it looks closer to 047. It's pretty thin stuff. Yeah. So we're gonna purge this. So we've got our foil in inlet side. We don't have an exit hole over here because we're going to bleed out the weld joint. Mm. And we're not perfect. We're close, but we're not perfect, yeah. perfect. What do you want your purge on? About a 25 right here. So I'll let that run for a minute. Okay. And run into here, and then I'll tack. I'll put some tacks around the outside as I spin it. Okay. Uh, to make sure everything's fit up as close as I can get, and then weld it out in sections at a time okay. to keep everything cool. How long do you let your purge run on that small piece there? It doesn't need to run but 30 seconds, 45 seconds? Yeah. Okay. In between there in a minute just to make sure, just to clear the back volume over here as well. Now that we're now that we're there, I think I need to back off this, back off the flow, put it down to about 15. See how that how that works.
Uh, how'd the Reynolds cap work out? <laughs> pretty I mean, good. That's, <clears throat> I'm pretty impressed with that by. I saw a variety of things, uh, technique and timing and stuff like that. I will hand this to you. You are one super smooth little rascal. I know you've got a following. We'll talk about a couple things here, but first one was your amperage. You have your machine set at, at 131 amps. You're never using anywhere close to that. I noticed when you tacked up, you hit this thing. You know, you, you did your fit and it was like bang, 90 amps, bang, 90 amps, in and out quick. And then I noticed you had to kind of peel things together and, and push and, and uh, use the end of the filler wire. And then when you got going, <clears throat> it was like, to me it looked like you were holding a little bit longer arc than normal. I know that I, I typically tend to do kind of a really drastic push angle. And so I, oh, I, maybe that's, I, I, okay. almost, I almost lead in front of in, in front of the tube, uh, like as whereas if this like drastically, if I'm coming in with it, I'm aimed more in a direction like this. Gotcha. Um, and then I noticed a couple of different techniques of your wire, but you are kind of known worldwide for your signature, how you hold the wire. And I, I mean, yeah. like, it's, it's, a, it's a good conversation around the dinner table when we talk about you. And, <laughs> and uh, about how you do your dabs and stuff from the side on aluminum and all that. It's amazing skills. So, got good color. This thing really didn't heat up super bad. We haven't cooled it off. We looked inside, got a good purge everywhere, good color. Nice work, Kane. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing your knowledge and skills and everything, everything we can do to, to kind of help people out and Nobody's going to ever be able to copy you, right? I, I hope so. <laughs> a lot of people have tried. I tried this. I made a mess. I can't do <laughs> it. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm kind of like the roll. I'm the roll guy or, or the feeding with the thumb thing. I'll spend some time. I might get that down. I think I tried it with the wrong wire. Thin aluminum, that's what it was. <laughs> aluminum like shakes to me all over. <laughs> it's so bad. All right, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I really hope you found this educational. I sure did, and I learned a lot off this guy, man. He's like, he's got, like the craftsman, he has got some true skills going on. So, uh, if you found this educational and entertaining, please hit the subscribe button. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Mr. Rush Kane, a.k.a. Kane Kid. Thanks for watching Weld.com. I see you have a, um, you brought your custom purge pieces here what is that is that <laughs> yeah, so is that that reynolds uh purge material yeah those are reynolds caps <laughs> <laughs> did they come out of this did they yeah. oh here it is right here the, it's heavy duty reynolds caps they're custom custom made to fit uh, right. per application nice uh how'd the reynolds cap work out <laughs> pretty I good mean, that's <sighs> i'm pretty impressed with that